It's really good. You would hate it. It's styled after a JRPG where you pick attacks off a menu. I thought this was just like some kind of commentary on like how I hate good games. <laughs> Welcome back to Cartridge Base Radio. I am Donald, once again joined by Brad. Hey everybody. Brad, it is getting down to that time of year where people give things to other people and then other people unwrap those things. Maybe, I don't know. It's the holiday seasons. Okay. So I thought maybe it's time we go shopping again. Uh, I like this idea. So what we're going to do... I know everyone expected us to talk about a classic video game here, but we're going to talk about new games that don't cost anything more than $20. Yes. I have gone into the depths of Steam and looked for games that don't cost more than $20, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at three of them that I have selected, and then you're going to play one of them and tell us what you think about it. All right, so you got to try to sell me on these games, and based on your pitch, I will choose whichever one sounds the best. Then there will be some podcast editing magic, and we will take a break. You will play the video game, come back, and tell me how my picks were. Are you ready, Brad? Uh, Well, just as a warning to you and all our listeners is I am an extraordinarily cheap person. So I'm going to be looking at your choices for me with skepticism and defensiveness and hostility. Uh, So you better make some good pitches. I would not expect anything else. Now, I have played two of these. Okay. Enjoyed two of these, and the third one I'm probably gonna buy for myself. All right, so two of these three have the coveted Donald endorsement. Yes, so I'm gonna give you a choice. Okay, do you want to hear about Uber Violence first? Is that is that actually the name of the game? Like, do you play an Uber driver who's violent? Okay, I have to edit that part out because we just came up with a great game idea. <laughs> No, just lots and vi- like overflowing of violence or a spooky castle or lots of pew pew. Um, spooky castle sounds kind of interesting. I was actually thinking about a different older game today that like took place in a haunted house. And I was thinking, you know, not enough games use like spooky castles and haunted houses as setting so yeah hit me up we can talk about splatterhouse later <laughs> okay but right now we are going to talk about salt and sanctuary which on the vita i have gotten the platinum trophy i love this game a lot so salt and sanctuary do you just want me to read you the blurb uh first i want you to clarify the name for me is it salt and sanctuary or is it sultan sanctuary sultan <laughs> no you're not the sultan of a sanctuary <laughs> it's salt and sanctuary okay sultan sanctuary on their steam page says explore a haunting punishing island in this stylized 2d action rpg sultan sanctuary combines fast and brutal 2d combat with richly developed rpg mechanics in a cursed realm of forgotten cities blood-soaked dungeons and desecrated monuments does this game come with colors or is that like a like a dlc that i have to buy separately at that That is definitely DLC. There is not much color in this game because its goal is to super depress you. Oh, man, that is always what I look for in a game when I have some limited free time. I'm like, what do I want to do right now? I want to get super depressed because I'm still a teenager. Don't worry. The other two games... I downloaded the color packs, so you'll get lots of color in those. This is basically Castlevania meets Dark Souls. This looks like Castlevania, except your guy walks super slow for some reason. Yes. Like, this is Castlevania on downers. So, as you go through the upgrade tree, which is massive, and you can actually apply points to your speed, and depending on what armor you're wearing, it will speed your character's movement up. Is is there... Is there a fun stat that I can put some points into? Now, listen here. You haven't played Salt and Sanctuary, one of the greatest games ever made. So you can't say that. Shut up, you. (laughs) 
it's fantastic. I believe it's fantastic. Put lots and lots of hours into it. It's got the Dark Souls, if you die, you have to run back to your corpse and reclaim your salt. Basically what they call souls in this game. But you have to go through and you collect some upgrades that let you do cool new moves, that let you access new areas. It's literally the Castlevania setup. Do you remember when we did the Castlevania episode? I do. We spent a lot of time talking about like how gorgeous that game was and how we wish they kept making 2D games so we could see like just the visual achievements that, that might have resulted in. Looking at the screenshots and video for Sultan Sanctuary, it looks like they took Castlevania and were like, what if we made it look like ass? <laughs> so kind of taken away from like some of that game's better qualities. I do appreciate the Dark Souls approach where if you die, it robs you of all your hard-fought progress that you spent all that time trying to achieve. I know it's great, right? Okay, so you want me to spend seventeen ninety nine on this mess. This game is not a mess, Brad. This game is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, maybe for like punishing children that have misbehaved. Uh, <laughs> what else do you got? Okay, Brad's a jerk. There's a Steam game called Brad's a Jerk? Yes. I want to buy it. <laughs> you rejected a great game for bad reasons. Your choices are Pew Pew or U Uber Violence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uber violence please okay actually there is a car in this game so it really is uber violence it might be brad yes welcome to the world of hotline miami no y yes no i've played hotline miami it is pure garbage it is one of the crappiest games that I've played. I'm not sure we can continue doing like a show together. If Hotline Miami is something you think I'd be interested in, I played this game for like 30 seconds and I was like, make it stop. How did you not like Hotline Miami? Oh man, what's to like about this game? Nothing. There's This game has no redeeming qualities. This game is near perfect. This is confusing. I'm baffled. But don't worry, I have a backup in case you hated one. Brad, how do you feel about Outlast? Yeah, I've watched my brother play Outlast. It's a pretty engaging game about cowardice and hiding from your problems and running away and... Hmm, but what if you are wrong and it's a great game? Then I guess we're living in opposite land because I've seen Outlast and it's not a great game. It's just like a bunch of hiding under beds. Yeah. You're just breaking my heart here. I mean, I'm half tempted just to go with Hotline Miami anyway, because it's the cheapest one you've pitched so far. And at least, you know, if I'm going to flush money down the toilet, it could be the smallest quantity of money. Okay, so Hotline Miami's out. Yes. Would you like another alternative game that I like that you're probably going to crap on? Yes, let's do that. <sighs> I'm just preparing myself to be hurt again. <laughs> Deus Ex Human Revolution. I love Deus Ex Human Revolution. Um, I think it's probably disqualified because I've played through Deus Ex Human Revolution. Finally, we're back on the same page. Oh, this game rocks. Now, did you play the director's cut? I did not. Now, I'm a little wary of director's cuts because it's usually like they add a bunch of stuff, but there was usually good reason that they cut it out of the game in the first place. So, you know how sometimes people are like, you took out a bunch of stuff just to make DLC? Yeah. Deus Ex totally took out something just to make DLC that actually explains something about the ending that without the DLC, you would look at and be like, huh, that's weird. <laughs> but if you've played the DLC, you're like, oh... This is seriously messed up in a way that I am uncomfortable with. So that actually, in a way, because I've already played this game, the regular version, that almost makes it kind of a hard sell because it's like, now I'm paying money to have the ending finally make sense. <laughs> you know, it's like they're hijacking the logic from this game. And they're just like, oh, you want a good ending? That's going to be 20 more dollars, please. Well, what's weird is it's the exact same ending, but 
It's the frame of reference that gets you. So it's like, oh, you want some context for this ending. Yeah, that's going to cost you additional money. Which I didn't play it till after. In this director's cut, they fixed the boss fights, from what I've been told. And they added in the, we're going to explain the ending to you. What I'm saying, if you haven't played Deus Ex, Human Revolution, get the director's cut. But, man, that's disqualified. Am I going to have to find another alternative? Let's hear your third game that you originally had come up with. Okay, we're going with Pew Pew. I've got real high hopes for this one. Brad, I need you to look up 20XX. Okay, now this looks kind of promising. 20XX is a Mega Man-like game where every time you play it creates new levels for you so like randomly generated levels yes and it's got bosses like mega man where you get their powers so it's run based it's got the dashing system from mega man x does it have the shot charging element that they added for mega man 4 and later where you basically spend the whole game holding down the fire button you can shot charge i believe but you don't have to okay a lot of people say that this is what mighty number no. 9 should have been this is made by people who are fans of mega man but wanted an infinitely replayable Mega Man. I'm looking at it and, you know, these random level designs. Like, level design is such an important part of a game, and now you're just going to, like, not put any effort into it at all. It's just, oh, it's it's all random, you know? Like, we just put stuff wherever. Who knows if the level will be any good? From what I've seen of watching this game be played is it's not, like, platforms are randomly placed. It's, like, sections that they Lego together. Ah. You'll see, like, repeat sections. It just what's before it and what's after it is not the same as it was last time you did your run. Okay, so there's just no flow to the levels then. From what I've seen when I watched it play, it just... I mean, it it looks cool. You're never like, oh, this is all disjointed. They do a good job of blending. So looking at the trailer and watching the whole thing, I can't help but notice that there's only one song, even though they're showing a bunch of different stages. And the one song's pretty good, but it makes you kind of wonder like, if you're going to get any other good music with it, which is such a huge part of the Mega Man experience. It has very positive reviews, if that tells you anything. Steam reviews are obviously the highest form of review in the land. I don't know. It looks fun. I really want to play it. I keep meaning to. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing quite like going on Steam and picking out like the newest and greatest 30-year-old game. So glad I shelled out, you know, the $36 it took to go on Newegg and get the cheapest PC they had so that I have the hardware necessary to power an NES game. Well, maybe we should scroll down to the system specs here to see if you can uh, run it. So it needs a processor from 2009, 1 gig of RAM, uh, any graphics card made during or after 2009, and one gigabyte of hard drive space. See, something really inefficient must be going on in this game because it looks like the requirements to run it is like a Casio keyboard from the late 80s. This is not like a technical feat. You know, it it might have some really fun gameplay, but this doesn't look like it should be taxing at all. I think I could probably like play this on my iPod. I think it'd probably be all particle effects that would be taxing it. It's got some nice glow to it. It's a very glowy game. I like that in the sidebar, it's just like similar to games you've played and it lists like three or four games that like I played for 10 minutes. It was like, eh, and never went back to. So, you know, it's similar to a lot of games that I'm pretty ambivalent on. Okay, well, I have one last one. You're going to say no. Okay. Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy, I've heard good things about. I finished Super Meat Boy once, and my hands hurt so bad. It was ridiculous. This is a fantastic action puzzle game, is how I would describe it. Oh, so it's frustrating. Yes, it's super frustrating, but at the same time, super rewarding. Okay. Yeah, we'll make that the third one. So we're taking off Deus Ex since you played it and know that it's great. 
Hotline Miami, which I'm really confused why you don't like blowing things up with shotguns. Because I kept getting killed, like, on the very first, like, the very first screen. Like, I opened the door and died. I was like, oh, awesome. I was like, well, be quieter. So then I did that and I got killed for some other stupid reason. That whole game's stupid. Brett, you have to kick in the door and knock down the person and then shotgun them while they're laying on the ground. Yeah, that's boring. That's not boring. <laughs> You can also jump on them and beat their head in the floor until it becomes mush. That game goes to weird places, man. You seem to have an affinity for these games where you just, like, die over and over and over and over until you figure out, like, the one way to do it. I'm already... I can tell Super Meat Boy is just going to be a game where it's just, like, fail constantly... And eventually you'll have tried every possible solution until you stumble upon, like, the one right way to do it. Yes, Brad, I enjoy games that challenge my skills and make me become better at them. You enjoy games that punish you because you probably have, like, some kind of hole in your soul that just... <laughs> you need... You need to be punished for, like, some horrible thing that you've done in your past. Are you implying I have a soul? <laughs> you just seek out these games to, like, punish you for your wrongdoings and life. Did you, like, get away with a murder or something and now, like, you have to play games like this to, uh, to kind of redeem yourself? I could pick you one that doesn't require this sort of commitment to difficulty, if you like. Because Dream Daddy's on sale... Do you want a dad dating simulator where you can date the hottest dads? So, this is a game where you date fathers. Yes. Not like one where you are a dad and try to get a date. Oh, no, no, it is. It's a game where you play as a dad and your goal is to meet and romance other hot dads. Yes. Okay, so it's like a My Two Dads kind of thing. So, all the dads have hot dad bods and you date them because you're trying to find you know, a love interest, and complete your family because your husband has unfortunately passed away at the beginning of the game. Brad, are you hot enough to find a dream daddy? You know, I'm looking at the screen where it just says, build that dad, and that is pretty great. And now someone is offering me the last piece of Havarti while looking very thoughtful. Why, thank you, Hugo. I will have that last piece of Havarti. At the park? There's a corgi with a cool scarf. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Looks like this one guy just crawled out of a dumpster. <laughs> That's the one that I want. <laughs> it's like John Stamos's like alcoholic <laughs> homeless cousin. <laughs> Now, that's just actually John Stamos. Aww. But that one dumpster over there is a recycling dumpster with, like, a carpet hanging out of it. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're just showing, like, people going through the build your guy simulator. And, like, he started out as, like, this normal looking. He had, like, glasses and a man bun. And he was, like, super fit. And then, like, three changes later, he's Ron Jeremy. <laughs> there you go. So, you can be Ron Jeremy trying to date the dream. Dreamiest Daddies. <laughs> Which is the guy that crawled out of the dumpster, obviously. Obviously. So, it's choice time, Brad, and I'm not actually going to ask you what your choice is. I'm removing Super Meat Boy from the, the list and is being replaced by Dream Daddy. Okay. So, we have 20XX, uh, Salt and Sanctuary. We had to cancel Uber Violence, our hit game. <laughs> Apparently, Uber had a problem with us marketing that. <laughs> and we have added Dream Daddy. Boy, for three games that I picked on, this is a hard choice. The Sultan Sanctuary, it maybe is the one that I'm most skeptical of, but I think it probably has the most upside because you keep saying Castlevania, which I think might just be a trick to uh, get me to play it. But it also looks like it might actually like be kind of fun, even if they forgot to add colors to it. The 20XX is like a Mega Man game, which is usually good, but there were also like seven or eight bad Mega Man games that are actual Mega Man games, so, you know, there's a little bit of a risk there. And then Dream Daddy has Homeless John Stamos, which already seems pretty wild. I think that would probably be the funniest one of these to play, but I don't know that I'd actually enjoy it. I don't really play dating simulators. Oh, man. Decision time. All right. So I don't want to know what your decision is. Okay. So uh, what's going to happen is we're going to probably have a very awkward cut and come back after you've had time to 
enjoy your dream game where you're a daddy. All right, Brad, are you prepared for the awkward cut? Okay, now hold on. Wait a minute. Th- that's not fair. I think I should get to pick out three games off of Steam and make you buy one of them. And if you want to be all defensive and pissy about it like I was, you can. I don't see how it's not fair because I don't have to do the painful thing of playing something I don't want to play. Yeah, well, I think we equally suffer for this work other than the part where you do like all the editing and marketing and online stuff. Uh, But other than that, we suffer equally for this podcast. And in anticipation of this, I actually had been going through Steam and picking out some games that I could recommend. So you had this stealth planned, is what you're saying? Yes. I I thought of this all ahead of time. I definitely didn't come up with it while you were pitching games at me that I do not want to play or spend money on as a way of vengeance. But no, I actually, I have three games that I think you might actually like some of these, which I believe was the same approach that you had towards coming up the list for me. Yeah, that blew up in my face. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm going to play one of them uh, with an open mind, and then we can discuss it. You can be as unfairly critical of these without having played them before as you'd like, and then we'll be even. All right, hit me. Okay. All right. So first things first, you like hockey, right? Hockey's pretty great. I mean, we did an episode on it a while back and um you seem like a fan but have you ever actually played hockey i played with my brother's street hockey team once and that's to say they pushed me down a lot and then shot pucks at me okay so it seems like maybe the best experience for you would be something where you get to experience hockey but not actually have to play it and i think i've got the game for you it is called franchise hockey manager 3 And it's basically like all the cool stuff that you do in the offseason of an NHL game, like set up your team and recruit players and draft and make trades. But you don't have to do that annoying part where you actually like control a guy and try to score goals. Now, to be clear, here on Steam, it says there's a FHM4, but we're going with three here. Yeah, because we have a budget limit of $20, so... Three fits into our budget, and four doubles it. There isn't a whole lot of innovation that they're going to bring to the simulating virtual hockey games aspect of things. So this looks like walls and walls of charts. There are so many spreadsheets. Is this the Monster Rancher of Hockey? This is like the Monster Rancher of Hockey, but you don't get to make your players get day jobs. So it has mixed reviews. It it does. From 59 people. So 59 <laughs> people couldn't decide if they liked it or didn't. <laughs> now, to be fair... The people who reviewed this have very strong opinions on whether or not they liked it. They just all couldn't agree with each other. That really lines up with sports fans, doesn't it? There does seem to be some concern about the interface. Not everybody thinks that it is easy to use. People pretty much knew what they were getting into with this, and some of them just didn't care for it. Okay, it's it says it's the deepest, most authentic hockey strategy game I can find. Yes. And it's officially licensed by the NHL, which is probably good because Hockey Manager without the official NHL license might be harder. Well, that would be Franchise Hockey Manager 2, which from what I've seen on the reviews looks like it was maybe a little easier to use, like the interface was better, but it lacks that NHL license. So you can make up whatever team names you want and you'll have players like, I don't know, Joe America or whatever. I haven't actually gone through the rosters in that game but you get generic guys generic teams uh, i think you can rename or whatever but franchise hockey manager 3 official team names logos uniforms that you won't actually get to see in action this is where it's at this is as deep of a simulator for hockey as you could 
ever want. While I play it, can I stand in like a little booth and just look disappointed about everything with my hands on my hips? Yeah, that that would be the authentic general manager experience. You got to have like another guy standing next to you that nobody knows who he is and he doesn't say anything and you just kind of glare at your ineffective players. Okay, so uh, there's a downside to this game. They decided it would be a good idea to have one of the screenshots feature the Capitals. Well, they have Ovechkin. He's pretty fun. But the Capitals, Brad. I mean, it's not like it's the Florida Panthers. Like, oh, I take that back. There's a screenshot of the Florida Panthers playing an actual NHL team, uh, the Montreal Canadiens. The Buffalo Sabres got a screenshot. Yeah, I think that's probably the most um, publicity that the Sabres have ever been used for in a hockey game before. And Boston got a screenshot? Well, I mean, they're an original six franchise. They're the fourth most popular sports team in Boston behind the Red Sox, Celtics, and Patriots. Brad, there's no other sports teams in Boston after that. They might have a WNBA team, maybe, or like a lacrosse team. (laughs) Arena football? I don't know. Um, It's been a long time since I've been to Boston. Okay. This speaks to my love of spreadsheets. Yes. But the part where it looks like when you go to play the game... You just watch an overhead view of the arena and you don't get to engage in the hockiness. That's the worst part of any NHL game is the part where you actually have to play hockey, in my opinion. Huh. Uh, okay. (laughs) You're like, oh man, Blades of Steel sucks. I have to play hockey. When do I get to sign players to contracts? That's what I'm all about. Uh, can I just fire everyone on a team? Be like, haha, now no one can beat me. I- I'm not sure how firing all your players would achieve that result, but uh, the option's probably in there. If they have no one to play, they have no one to defeat. <laughs> Think about it. So that's Franchise Hockey Manager 3. It is about hockey, and it does max out our budget. So maybe not the best choice if you're just trying to get through this painful exercise as inexpensively as possible. Ready for the next game? I am ready for the next game. Okay, our next game is called Poly Bridge. P-O-L-Y Bridge. Poly Bridge. (gasps) This looks amazing. Oh, oh, Brad, that bridge just fell in the water. (laughs) Everyone go watch this trailer. The bridge (laughs) fell in the water and all the cars crashed. (laughs) There's a school bus on that bridge, like a bunch of children just drowned. Let's imagine the children were dropped off and it was just an alcoholic driver. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, this is Poly Bridge. It is a game where you construct bridges across rivers and valleys and whatnot and it's a physics model so you have to stay within a budget of kind of a number of pieces that you can make your bridge out of the idea is to make it as efficiently as possible but it still has to hold up the vehicle traffic and not collapse on itself we had a game like this in my high school physics class but it was way simpler way stripped down and it was still like All anybody in class wanted to do, probably because it was ten times more interesting than actually learning about physics. Yeah, this is a neat game. I've got this game. Uh, I enjoy it. And you get to build bridges and then watch school buses crash into a river. Yeah, that's actually, that's really rad. Because it just, it falls apart so beautifully. The people in the VW bus are like, oh man, we're going in the river. There's a guy on a motorcycle who jumps over a helicopter. I see nothing wrong with jumping over a helicopter on a Vespa. (laughs) And I don't know if you have the sound on when you're watching these trailers, but the soundtrack is fantastic. It sounds like the background music of an orange juice commercial, and I I absolutely adore it. I like the sound it makes when uh, things go in the water. It's satisfying. Yes, so satisfying. You know, you really feel like that family just fell into a deep body of water that they're not going to get out of. Uh, There's a trebuchet. There is. I mean, I don't think that's the correct way to send a car across a a valley. (laughs) It'll get it there. (laughs) 
Could you imagine being in that car? It would be terrifying. I mean, I'm sure you know what you're getting into when you load your own car up into the trebuchet. <laughs> what if you're just a tourist and you're like, I don't understand this country's culture, and then you're flying through the air? That's why you always do your research before going to a foreign <laughs> land. you got to Google, does this country use trebuchets to cross valleys? <laughs> <laughs> They do, and for some weird reason, they call them tree buckets. So, <laughs> Poly Bridge, that's pretty neat. Yeah. I mean, it's no Hotline Miami. Well, you know, not everything can be Hotline Miami. That's sad. That's sad. You ready to have me pitch a third game at you, or, or are you so in love with Poly Bridge? I'm pretty in love with Poly Bridge, I'm not going to lie. Football managers not looking, or soccer <laughs> managers not looking. <laughs> Hockey. Uh, hockey. <laughs> yeah, it's really not looking too good for whatever the hell sport it was, manager. Sports game manager. <laughs> Just sport. All right. What you got? All right. Uh, third game that I'm offering. I know that you enjoy, for whatever deep-seated psychological self-hatred that you have of yourself, you like games that kind of make you suffer. And when you fail at them, erase all your progress and make you go back to the start and are just merciless in that way. So I have a game called Crypt of the Necrodancer. Ooh, I've actually heard of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Crypt of the Necrodancer has a fantastic soundtrack that's also customizable if for whatever insane reason you actually get sick of the music that comes with this game, which should not happen. It's got some fantastic pixel art, and it's rhythm-based gameplay where you have to go along with the beat of the music to move your character around a grid and attack monsters. And... Your favorite thing about this game, I'm sure, is if you die, all the way back to square one. That's pretty good. Yeah, um, I have this game. It's super fun. The soundtrack is awesome. And then if you feel like it, you can replace all the soundtrack with Bee Gees music. And then it's like Crypt of the Disco Dancer. It is similar to games I play. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Not getting into any specifics, but it is similar to other games. Uh, Nuclear Throne and Tangle Deep. Ah. Okay, the Crypt of the Necrodancer ultimate bundle is here for 55.94 yeah you can just get the base game for 15 bucks you save five percent Ooh. is there like lots of add-on music tracks looks like that's what comes with the bonus packs is new songs or more songs uh, and maybe you get the soundtrack separately. I'm pretty sure you can buy the soundtrack like off of this guy's Bandcamp or whatever page for however much you want to pay for it. But the bundle is there also if you want it. No, that would break the rules of this game. Yes. This game looks fantastic. Apparently you are better at picking games out for me than I am for picking out for you. Because you were like, ah. I think I'm better at the part of the game where we act defensive and cynical even if secretly we're like oh that game looks cool i am bad at that because i love the video <laughs> games brad you're a more genuine person than i am donald i have to play them and have them force me to hate them before i can hate them i have been conditioned to not let people know that i occasionally experience positive feelings because that indicates a weakness oh that's weird. <laughs> yes. Do you want me to try to say something bad about this game? or? Uh, if you want to give it a shot. Okay, I'll try this. You suck, Brad. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this game. No, th this looks cool. Yeah. I was maybe exaggerating just a little when I say that you lose all your progress when you die. It has four stages that are two levels each. Might even be more than two levels each. I think it might be like two levels in a boss fight. I don't remember. It's been a little while since I played it. You can start on any of the four stages once you get to them. But to really do well at the game and kind of take some of the random luck aspect out of it, you really want to start from level one and play all the way through because that gives you more chances to get items. And items are critical for your success in this game. Yeah, so it's a roguelike. Yeah, that is a description that I've been hearing a lot in the last year or so, and I don't actually know what that means other than it's about like some game that no one actually played in the 80s. So a roguelike 
is you start and it generally makes a random field. So like Spelunky or Nuclear Throne. Yeah, or Lotus Turbo Racing 2. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go in and you try to survive as long as you can. And you eventually start unlocking shortcuts and ways to upgrade your character. So you start off real, real weak. And then you eventually just get better through learning skills or doing shortcuts or just getting bonus stuff it's awesome because it makes you be good that is a pretty good definition it makes sense okay so i guess i have three games to pick from sounds like hockey manager is not really in the running i was gonna say to be honest i have two games to pick from because the hockey manager one looks like a level of pain i'm not ready for (laughs) Like, I'd have to be really deep into my love of hockey management, and I can hardly get through a season of fantasy hockey with some guys I play with. (laughs) Do you have a backup, just in case I rejected one, and then I wasn't all rejecty? I did pick out a backup game. It's a game called Red Out, and this was a game that I saw first at last year's PAX Prime. They had it on display, and me and my friend that I was there with played it, and then we both like got home, and he lived on the other side of the country, so it took him a little bit longer to get home. And we're both like, we have to get this game. So it's kind of like Wipeout. It even has out in the title. When I say it's kind of like Wipeout, I don't know what I was thinking. This is way beyond our budget. I was about to ask you... uh did we up our budget by $14? <laughs> you know what? I, I picked out three games. I adhered to the rules. And then I was like, oh, I need a backup game. And I completely forgot that there were rules to this. So, um, no. It looks sweet. It It is pretty sweet. We could both not get anything and throw our entire budget into this game that i guess we take turns on or something i'd have to go over to your house to play it and you already own it and you're like this is weird why am i here (laughs) yeah so i guess my backup plan is that if you don't like any of the games i picked out you can come over to my house and play the copy of red out that i already have well, it's outside of our budget, but thank you for introducing me to Red Out. Yeah, anytime. So those were my picks. Uh, one of them blatantly disregarded the the rules, our good, good rules that we set out with. They're pretty great rules. I'm sure the Rule Commission of Earth will want a copy of them. It has the rule seal of quality attached to it. Is that as... Meaningful as the Nintendo seal of quality or the Sega seal of quality? Uh, probably the Sega seal of quality, yeah. Ouch. So they're not worth it whatsoever. <laughs> All right. So I guess now we have to have the awkward cut, unless I'm about to interrupt you with three new games. Wait, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the games you told me to, because apparently when I was telling you the games, you were off perusing for other games. So I'm not sure if you actually looked at Potline Miami too closely. You wear masks, Brad. You wear animal masks. And then you kill people. Oh, I had totally forgotten about the mask part. All right. So I guess here comes the awkward cut. (laughs) And Brad... That is why I'm not allowed at the Safeway down the street anymore. Well, they were probably just really uncomfortable with you bringing that many snakes into the store at one time. If they can be on a plane, why can't they be on a Safeway? I think there's health code reasons. Anyway, welcome back from the awkward break. We have actually been away for, what, a week now? Yes. And it is time for you to reveal which of the Steam games... You picked. Okay, so it was a tough call between the Daddy Dating Simulator, uh, the game that was kind of like Mega Man, I believe that was called 20XX, uh, and then the final game that you had picked out called Sultan of the Sanctuary, or um, Salt and Sanctuary, That that's what it was called. That last one, that was the one that I ended up going with. You described it as being similar to Dark Souls, you also described it as being similar to castlevania symphony of the night i believe i said castlevania ah big difference yes (laughs) so that's one game that i didn't like so much dark souls and 
what I thought was one game that I really, really enjoyed, which was Symphony of the Night, which apparently you didn't compare it to. And Sultan's Sanctuary ended up being kind of about halfway in between those two games. I enjoyed it, not nearly as much as Symphony of the Night, but a lot more than I did Dark Souls. And um, in terms of design, it is kind of similar to Dark Souls, but I found it to be a lot less frustrating, mainly because it's still a game where you're going to die a lot. Uh, the bosses are very hard. And the exploration can be tough because sometimes you have to go through a very large area before you find a save point, And sometimes you just don't make it. And w once you learn where these save points are, the pathways are actually pretty short. But finding these short paths can be difficult. But the minor enemies in between boss fights, unlike Dark Souls, usually the fights were very quick. You know, in Dark Souls, I didn't get very far, but I was... And this is so early in the game, the people who've played are going to be like, man, that guy really sucks at Dark Souls. But I was in a part where I was, like, fighting these skeletons, and, like, you actually, like, had to, like, have a drawn-out fight with each one of them, because you had to wait for them to, like, stop blocking and give you a chance to counterattack. And it just got to be kind of tedious, and then I'd go and get killed by a boss, and then I'd have to spend, like, 20 minutes fighting all those skeletons again. It drove me nuts. Sultan of the Sanctuary is nothing like that at all. Like, you can kill most of the enemies pretty quickly, but if you're clumsy about it, they're going to put a hurting on you. So, either way, though, it's fast-paced, and I appreciated that a lot more than Dark Souls, where I had to just keep playing through everything over and over and over. How far did you get? Not super far. I think I killed about four bosses, so I'm in maybe like the fourth or fifth area. I want to say I'm in the Sunken Keep, Yeah. Oh, okay. but... I killed the boss there, and I was into the next area, but I couldn't find the save point. So uh, my last sanctuary uh, that I'm the sultan of is, I think, in the Sunken Keep. <laughs> you just refuse the name, and the one that you came up with is actually really good. <laughs> just the sultan <laughs> of the sanctuaries. Yeah, I really enjoy Sultan Sanctuary. Like I said a couple minutes ago in, in the show, I platinumed it on the Vita. So I got all the trophies, which involves two playthroughs. Well. And I I really enjoy that game. It's got a good lore. I really like the look. I know some people were turned off by the look. I, I have to admit, I didn't love the, the visuals. This is one of the things where, compared to Castlevania, I thought it was really lacking. It almost looks like Castlevania, but done by the guy that does like the artwork for Gorillaz videos. Which is kind of, it sounds interesting, but it didn't look nearly as good as I thought like Symphony of the Night does. And also just there wasn't as much variety in backgrounds or enemies or things like that. So visually I didn't find it to be terribly interesting, but I do think it's a really well designed game. Right past the Sunken Keep you're going to start getting into uh, new types of enemies. I would say that you got right up to the point where they kind of start letting you off the chain up to the soul of Sunken Keep is kind of, that's kind of where they stop holding your hand in a way when they start giving you your powers. Because once you start getting your powers, the exploration gets so much crazier. Well, I'm super glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. What character classes did you play through as? I have a hunter which is the guy with the whip at the beginning. Yeah. And then I played through with a cleric. Okay. And then I have a third game started with the um, the paladin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm doing a playthrough as a thief, uh, which has been interesting. It's kind of weird. Just like storyline-wise, like the game starts as you're escorting a princess to form a marriage alliance. And like the classes that you can pick, you know, the ones you mentioned, there's also a cook and a knight and things like that. Things that you would expect to like be escorting a princess on a sea voyage. And then they just brought a thief along. They're like, maybe we'll need to steal something along the way. Well, Brad, how do you think they got the princess? The thief. I... I... <laughs> I thought maybe they had her all along, but now it makes sense. We just totally bowsered her. Yeah, it's a fun game. You Your boat crashes. Uh, just so you know, you can beat that first boss on the uh, boat. Maybe you can. No, you could too. After you beat the last boss and you go back and fight that guy, you're like, oh, wow, your pattern is just telegraphed for days. And once you realize how to do it, 
that guy's a complete pushover. The only problem is one hit and you're done. That is one thing that I found kind of interesting about at least the bosses I've fought so far, and it might change uh, going forward, but so far the boss patterns have been really, really obvious. And it's almost like, we're not going to surprise you. This is what I'm going to do. Be better than this. And it's hard. It's hard to be better than, like, you know what's coming, and I just screw it up anyway and died 10, 20 times. I mean, really, that's any of the Souls games. It's a very set pattern. You just have to be prepared, and like you said, be better than it. But those bosses are easier than a Dark Souls boss because you're only dealing with the two-dimensional plane. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, you know, rolling under a sword as it's coming from the left. And oops, it actually came from the right to the side and now my head is gone. But there's only one boss I can think of in that game. Uh, He's throwing potions and it's always a random potion. Yeah, I think I fought that guy, unless there's another one later, but uh, the Mad Alchemist. Yeah, okay. He was kind of... E- like, I I just wore of attrition to him. I just got in close and kept hitting the attack button. It was probably the only boss fight I didn't really have to finesse at all. I just wailed on the attack button and won. He's the only one I can think of that has a randomness to him. A lot of them, the big secret to him is... If they hit you once, you die. Yeah. Like the the Kraken and whatnot. I think what finally decided it for me is that this game was made by a company or a developer called Ska Studios. And I was just like, maybe like if I beat the game, my character will get a checkered fedora that he can wear everywhere. And that'll be pretty sweet. Uh, they made a very popular Xbox Live arcade game called Vampire Smile. Or the Dishwasher something? Samurai Dishwasher? I I vaguely remember this. Yeah, and then they have uh, another game called Charlie Murder. It's a uh, it's a husband and wife team, so two people put that together. Uh, they might have contracted the music out. Oh, that's another thing. That game has really great music. Okay, uh, the parts that I've gotten to have been I want to say devoid of music. Well, I'm talking about the the boss fight music oh yeah that gets the blood going but yeah it's it's devoid of music but when that boss fight music starts your heart gets going you're like is this the time his tail's gonna smack down on my head because i missed the roll all right so salt and sanctuary yes do you recommend it to people who have 20 dollars and a steam account yeah in fact it's kind of a bummer because like I have one friend who this game would be perfect for for a Christmas present, but he listens to the show and I already know like he, as soon as he hears this episode he's gonna like if he doesn't have this game already he's gonna go buy it off Steam right away. So maybe I'll trick him into thinking we didn't put out an episode this week and then uh, when Christmas comes I'll get him the game and I'll tell him about this episode. It'll be like a double present. So, um, what did you end up picking out of the games that I had picked out for you? I picked up Crypt of the Necrodancer. You passed up on the Hockey Spreadsheet Simulator. I'm so sorry I passed up on the Hockey Spreadsheet Simulator. I'm a little disappointed, but I'm also intrigued to hear what you thought of Crypt of the Necrodancer. So, the first thing I did was I didn't buy it on Steam. It was on sale on PSN, and I thought, this game looks like something I'd want on my Vita. So, I bought it there, so I don't know if that's cheating. Uh, I'll allow it, although I do kind of wonder, do you still have the option to add custom music? Uh, no you don't. Okay, so that does kind of put an asterisk on your review because... You haven't really experienced Crypt of the Necrodancer until you've played it to staying alive. Okay. Well, I do plan on purchasing it for Steam because the Steam version seems to have a lot more DLC than the, the PlayStation versions. That being said, I was terrible at Crypt of the Necrodancer for about six hours. <laughs> like, I wanted to throw my Vita, but it's too precious. So I gently set it down next to me and just glared at it for a while. Uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer is a frustratingly awesome game. Yes, that is probably the best tagline. You can put little tags on games and Steam so that they're more searchable. Frustratingly awesome should be a searchable tag. I will go add it after this episode i don't know why you would want to add well i do know why you'd want to add staying alive to this but the music in this game is phenomenal yeah like 
there are very few games I can point at, like maybe Bastion and Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery, where I'm like, these are just epic soundtracks. And Crypt of the Necrodancer joins that hierarchy of hot music because every time you go down a floor, it's just like, oh man, this party is getting more and more on fire. <laughs> and then suddenly there's a dragon who just messes your day up. Yeah, yeah, the, the dragons are tough. Uh, I found that if you get a spear, you're far more survivable because you can hit things from an extra square away. Yeah. I always manage to dance right in front of something and then get hit. Once I finally got my head around like the Taurus or the Minotaurs, yeah, things got easier for me. And then I met a guy who was a skeleton. He's like a heavy metal skeleton. And he killed me real good. Um, I have not made it to World 2 yet. Okay. So... I am not good at Crypt of the Necrodancer, but I am better than the night after we picked games. Because that first night, oh boy. It's like, I hate this game. I hated Crypt of the Necrodancer for about three hours. I, like, I got to power through because Brad talked nice about this game. <laughs> Once I got my head around the systems and it started giving me actual good weaponry and stuff, it's a special little gem Yeah, that I am glad I now have on a portable system that I can take with me to, like, children's dance recitals. You're like, your child was on stage for two and a half minutes. This performance is two hours long. <laughs> well, Crypt to the Necrodancer <laughs> time. <laughs> Don't even bring headphones. Just blast it so everybody else in the audience can appreciate it. Yeah, the Vita's big, beefy speaker playing that game without hearing it would just be a complete nightmare <laughs> it would be a lot harder that's probably i wouldn't be shocked if there's an option in there to just like no music mode but you still have to like figure out the timing hey uh, you got the heart at the bottom of the screen so you can watch that i don't know how you watch that and watch what's going on up above the heart that might be a little difficult. Yeah. But I love its pixel art graphics. It's just very good. And when the floor lights up in a disco fashion, it activates something in my brain that makes me very, very happy. But then if I miss the beat, the, the floor turns off and I'm very sad. So Crypt of the Necrodancer is really an emotional up and down for me. It's like I want to do good because the music's so great. I want the disco floor, but those stupid skeletons just keep whacking me. Yeah. Like I come at them and their hands are down and then they like raise their hands and just hit me. I'm like, I don't even know how to get close to you fools if I don't have a spear. It's almost like there's a puzzle element to it. Not only do you have to try to jump on beat, but you also have to kind of space it out so that your legs landing and hitting an attack before they get a chance to attack you it really it took a while to get the hang of that i'd say the only thing that i thought was kind of a downside to that game is just that a lot of your success depends on the kind of drops that you get and the items that are available in the shop you can kind of stack the deck a little bit but it is there is a random aspect to it and uh, if you don't get good weapon options you're gonna have a real rough go of it that's true but that's sort of baked into the roguelike dna so at this point i'm very used to that uh speaking of the shop i think one of the greatest things in this game is if you go into the shop when you're pretty deep into the song the shopkeeper starts singing <laughs> And it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> the first time he did it, I was like, oh, hello, what? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the soundtrack to that game. And, uh, yeah, there's, like, a separate track for, like, normal stage and then, like, stage with the shopkeeper singing. And it's it's pretty great. I am most definitely going to be picking up the official soundtrack to that game because that is one I kind of want on my phone for emergencies where I'm not listening to Crypt of the Necrodancer. It's also such a good name. Yes. It's... Like, whoever named that game deserves a hug from everybody. Because <laughs> before this game, we did not have the word Necrodancer. And now we do. And it's fantastic. Not quite sure what's going on with the story. Story, but I don't think the story is that heavy in that game. Not not huge, no. The most important thing is dancing in a crypt, because you are the necro dancer. 
Uh, what's nice about Crypt of the Necro Dancer after you turn it off, the music goes along with you. Yeah. Like in your head, and that's pretty wonderful. So far, it's the second floor that you get to in the first little batch. That's the song that I've liked the most so far. I have the the opening title theme as the ringtone on my phone. Well, you are doing things right in your life. Like one time I just sat there with it on, tapping the screen so it wouldn't go to sleep so I could just jam to that music. It's a great game after you get out over that frustrating hump. It's not as bad as as frustrating as the opening to Metal Gear Solid 5. Have to take your word on that. Sometime we're going to talk about that. I wanted to quit Metal Gear Solid 5 so bad in that first 45 minutes, but Crypt of the Necro Dancer, I didn't want to quit, but I kept telling myself I wanted to quit. But then when I died, I instantly just jumped back to the stairs. I was like, we're doing this again because <laughs> <laughs> we got to hear the music and we have to be better. So I really like Crypt of the Necro Dancer. So I want to thank you for leading me to that and not tricking me into a spreadsheet manager. You know, I, I still think you would have had fun with Hockey Spreadsheet Manager. Well, I do have a huge spreadsheet for this show, and I do enjoy filling <laughs> that in. Also, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been downloading the show like mad lately. That means a lot to us. Uh, we are really bad at promotion. If you've ever been to our Twitter or Facebook page, it will attest to that. But it's like you guys out there are telling other people about our little insane show, and more and more people are downloading it. So thank you to all the listeners you're making us grow even though we have no idea how to do it ourselves we started this podcast right around the time that i started thinking you know i'm getting kind of bored with facebook i don't think i'm going to go on it very often and then it's like hey we have a show that we should probably be promoting on social media and once a week we do <laughs> i guess that's probably going to do it for steam shopping part one yes i had a lot of fun with this project even though i didn't buy my game on steam i also had fun though i did buy my game off of steam but i think it was on sale so i might have saved like three bucks brad any final thoughts on steam shopping and or sultan of the sanctuary as happy as i am with uh, the sultan's sanctuary i think i'm probably going to go back and check out 20xx at some point so you know th this might have turned out to be a really good idea because i might end up getting two good games out of the deal and if you ever download franchise uh spreadsheet hockey manager you also might get two good games out of the deal i might get crypt of the necro dancer and hockey spreadsheet manager i'm not gonna say hockey spreadsheet manager is a good game because it kind of looks painful <laughs> uh, i too am planning on picking up 20xx because a quick mega man just sit down and play looks like a good idea for my life so if you want to get a hold of us uh you know where to find the show notes if you don't because you're new they are just in the show notes all our contact stuff and the show notes themselves are on cartridgebasedradio.com which if you didn't know that i'm i don't know how you found our show but cool thank you well itunes google play i've put us everywhere i possibly can find we're on youtube have, have we actually mentioned on the show that we have a youtube channel i don't think we we are so bad at this we are so bad at promoting we are on youtube so if you want to watch the cover art that i make for each show while listening to us you can do that now it, let's say for example you're somebody who likes to paint warhammer miniatures and while you're doing that you like to just go on youtube and play a podcast and you just for whatever reason you get sick of listening to hour-long shoot interviews of pro wrestlers so you decide to mix it up cartridge based radio is uh i'm describing my brother exactly and he'll never hear this because he keeps listening to shoot interviews instead of our podcast but if you like my brother uh like to have some background noise and youtube's just the easiest way for you to do that you know, maybe think about us in that format instead of just wrestlers complaining about their bosses. Brad, you need to clockwork orange him. Um, there's a lot of things that happen in that movie, and I think I know what you mean, but there's just so many other things that could be, and I'm really not comfortable with this. Um, the one where they put him in the chair and make him watch. Yeah. 
Th- that's what I was hoping you meant. Yeah, uh, I probably shouldn't have gone down that avenue because after I said it, I realized, oh, that could mean many, 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 many things. But anyway, that's it for this episode of Cartridge Base Radio. I'm Donald, that was Brad, and we will see you next week. <laughs> It reminds me of when I used to, uh, ha- when I had Wii Fit, and I'd jump on there, and they're like, what's your weight loss goal? And i put in some numbers, and i come back a month later, and they're like, you gained 20 pounds. Maybe you picked poorly for your goal. And I was like, I just want to play Hula Hoop. I don't need this. Nintendo trying to be nice about you messing up your goals is probably one of the funniest things to watch. <laughs> It's just Mario standing there tapping his foot, glaring at you. I'm like shoving cake in my face while this is happening. I'm like, you, we fit. <laughs> this is spite cake. It doesn't even taste good.